است. تست 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 Test.
Okay, um, good morning to both of you. Um, I morning. hope you are doing well. Um, okay, great. Oh, my chat box is hidden. So I just saw um, what you wrote. Um, yeah, I'm doing well. Um, went to, um, I went out uh, yesterday and to a uh, supermarket just trying to buy something. And there are just a lot of people in there and uh, I think people are trying to buy more food um, and just to stay at home. Uh, please show us how to import any data. Okay, we're gonna do that. Um, so um, what are we gonna do today is that, um, so last week we, um, we actually just started a, a introduction and overview on the idea of big data and the um, non-SQL database, uh, especially in MongoDB. Um, and uh, we uh, discussed how to uh, make a connection to the server and uh, how um, to import data into MongoDB. Um, so today our focus is more on how to access data um, in MongoDB. So basically, if you still remember that we talked about uh, uh, how to access data in MySQL, um, so basically just a one query starting uh, with select. And uh, uh, we have a lot of clause to perform, uh, like what if I want to select a particular column? What if I want to select a particular rows with some filtering condition? Um, and what if I want to aggregate the data um, or sort the data? Um, so all those operations can be done in MongoDB um, and that will be the same we're gonna discuss today. Um, so let me see what we discussed the last week. So I hope you still remember what we discussed the last week um, on the big data and the, uh, and the MongoDB. Let's see, how can I do this? Um, okay. Um, so basically, um, we discussed uh, the idea of big data um, and uh, it's not showing here. So it's the three uh, Vs, the volume, uh, variety and the velocity. Um, and uh, we discussed the issues and dealing with big data um, that basically is, is uh, impossible for us to deal with uh, big data in a regular computer. And uh, it's gonna be an issue because we don't have enough computation power. We don't have enough storage. Um, and then our solution is that we said we can use a thing called a distributed system, um, or sometimes we just say it as a cluster of computers. Um, and then we can make use of the powers, uh, so both the storage and the computation power from uh, multiple computers. And theoretically, we can expand this system um, with a limited number of computers. So that is the way we deal with big data. Um, and then we said we're gonna um, start talking about data storage uh, in this uh, uh, big data solution. Um, so data storage we use is a thing called non-SQL, uh, which can work well on a distributed system. Um, and we pick this MongoDB. Um, so let me quick review the uh, structure of MongoDB and the difference from MongoDB and the RDBMS. Um, so we said we use different terms in MongoDB. Um, the structure looks similar. Um, we have MongoDB server and the multiple databases. And in each database, instead of tables in uh, RDBMS, uh, in MongoDB we will have collections. Um, and right over here, in each collection is a collection of uh, several documents. And that is like the terms we usually use. Uh, we have a collection instead of table um, and we don't have rows because that's not a table format and we will have documents 
Um, and each document in MongoDB is shown as a BSON file, uh, which looks similar like the, uh, the dictionary uh, in Python. So you will have uh, fields and you will have value for each field. And basically in the document, uh, each um, attribute um, or value we have, and we have a uh, field and value pair. Um, and then it stores a regular value, uh, the market data and character tab data and it also stores the embedded document which means you can use a document as a value uh, in a field and it also support a thing called array uh, which looks similar as an array in python so we can um, store multiple um, elements um, as a value um, so that is a uh, idea here uh, in mongodb um, and we um, I think, so we discuss on the servers and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, start talk about um, these four operations. Uh, we actually mentioned uh, three of them. We mentioned the create, update, and delete. So we're gonna talk about the, the R here, which is read. Um, so I can help you do review. Uh, let me see. So if you haven't um, like open your campus, um, you can do it now. So here will be my MongoDB campus. And when you open it, it looks like this, okay. All right, um, so I hope um, your MongoDB campus is open. Um, and in uh, this lecture, we can gonna use um, just the MongoDB campus and we don't uh, use a queries or, or anything else. And we'll use campus to form the, um, all the operations we, we're gonna learn, okay? Um, so then um, here's the homepage. Um, that you're gonna see whenever you open your MongoDB campus. And then on the sidebar here, on the left hand side, um, you're gonna see several uh, buttons. Uh, the new connection is the one uh, we can definitely use and to build a new connection. Um, and the favorite, um, which I don't have any, um, because I haven't done anything, it's like your, uh, bookmark um, and probably you're gonna build a connection to multiple, uh, to multiple servers. And there are some servers you frequently use and you can definitely put it as a favorite. Um, and then also provide you the recent. Uh, if you did the connection last uh, week and probably you're gonna see a recent here and with your uh, cluster uh, address and the whole string to help you make the connection. Um, so I think you can click this recent and use it directly um, to click a connect and to mix a connection and it should store all your information, including your username and password. Um, you can also mark it as favorite. Um, so here is a small button. You can mark it as favorite and give a name. Um, so I just call it ODB Atlas. Okay. Um, so let me put it as blue. Save it. Okay, so after you save it, you're gonna see that under the favorite list. So then let me try. So I click to this, my favorite connection. I click the connect button and then um, it's connected now. Okay, so now it looks good. Uh, and again, you can create a database using the green button and uh, you need to create a collection when you create a database, just to make sure it's not an empty database. Uh, and the database I created last time called Coco right over here. Um, if you have a database, you can click the name and go into the database. Okay, right over here. 
And then you will need a uh, collection. Um, if this is a, your first time, you should already have the collection, uh, the insurance. If not, um, then you can uh, simply create um, a new collection. I just create a temp collection. And because I already have my data, but um, can show you again how to import the data um, into MongoDB. So we just gave a name, that's it, to create the collection. And the weight, you're gonna go back to the database list. Um, I don't really know why, but anyway, you have to go into your uh, database again. And my temp is here. And now it's an empty collection and no documents, okay? Um, so we want to import data into this temp. So I just click the name again and uh, click it, go into the collection. Um, and two buttons you can use, add data um, up here, it's a green button and the import data uh, in the middle. Um, so if you use add data, uh, it gives you two ways. Either you can import the file or manually insert the uh, document. Um, if you do import data, um, it will give you the pump up window um, and it can uh, show you one thing how to select the file. So you're gonna need to browse your computer and select the file you want to input into the collection. Uh, we can use the JSON file uh, on Blackboard. I uploaded two, uh, one called insurance, another one called the restaurant, uh, both a JSON format. So you can use that. Uh, the main reason is remember that we use the insurance.csv before, okay? Um, and the main reason that um, I, I didn't ask you to import the CSV file is because that um, CSV file, uh, that is a uh, comma separate file. And uh, um, although you can use, you can just open it in Excel, uh, but you can also open it in um, Notepad. Uh, it's actually a uh, plain text file. So that is why you can open it in Notepad and see the data. So if you open your insurance.csv file in Notepad and you will see that um, and the data we have, um, let me see whether I can show you. So each um, field we have there, it has, okay, right over here. Each field they have here um, and they don't have, um, okay, right over here. Um, so they just have the comma uh, separator and uh, there is no quote for the character tab and there is like no uh, quote for um, the numbers, whatever. Uh, and then there may be an issue that uh, the MongoDB campus uh, may trade whole, um, all the values you have uh, in Shiro as character tab. So probably they can add the quote for even numbers. So for both the numbers and the character tab. Then there's gonna be a problem. Uh, we can import the data without problem, but then when you're trying to calculate, for example, average age um, for all the people here, average BMI, and you cannot do that because average is a function we can only apply on numbers. And if MongoDB see your value has code and it will treat it as character tab instead of numbers. Um, so then it's gonna be a problem. You have to run some script to manually um, change those numbers and remove the quotes. So that is why um, I didn't use uh, the CSV file. Um, so instead I just put uh, the JSON file. And for the JSON file, um, let me see. Okay, insurance.json file. The JSON file I prepared uh, for you and they have a document uh, for each row. 
um, and includes all the field and the values. And for the values, you can see that those are shown in brown uh, color here. Uh, those are character tab in whistle quote. And those are showing orange color here, and those are numbers. They can easily distinguish the number and the character tab. Um, the Mongo, uh, MongoDB Compass can do that too. So when you import that, you will not have um, any issue uh, on the data tab and values. Um, so now let me go back here. Okay. So now let me go back um, to this um, MongoDB Compass. Um, so we just select the JSON file. And uh, uh, if you download, if you have already downloaded my uh, JSON, um, the two files from Blackboard, you can simply click the browse button and uh, find the, uh, the data set. So insurance.json. Okay, so here, you browse and select the file that's right over here. So next thing you just need to click import, that's it. So you wait, uh, it's much faster than MySQL. Um, and then those will be the data. Um, so basically uh, you will have everything and you can double check um, and to see all the fields and all the values. Um, and again, MongoDB for each uh, document a has, uh, MongoDB will automatically create um, a thing, uh, a user field name underscore ID. Um, it's just like a primary key to help MongoDB server identify each record. Um, so that is a string and uh, we don't really care about the value. Um, so it's just for the system um, we use um, and we will not use that uh, underscore ID here, okay? Um, and then uh, if you would like to manually input the data, uh, see the structure. And uh, if you would like to manually insert something, you need to keep the same structure um, and the user field and the use value. So then if you want to do that, um, which arrow do you get? So let me show this one. Um, so if you, I don't know whether you can post any I think if you want to post something in the chat box, you can only post a text, uh, but not screenshot. So probably if you got arrow, probably you want to tap your arrow here. Um, so let me show you this one first. Uh, if you want to manually insert a document, you can go to the add data again and click insert document. Um, and then um, here is a place, uh, just like a text box, you can manually tap. Um, again, it looks like a Python dictionary. So you need to use the bracket, um, gave a field name. Um, so I just call it name, I gave a value. Um, and uh, what kind of arrow do I have? Uh, let me go here. Hmm? What happened in my tab? Okay, let me go here. Oh, I think I need to use um, quotes. Okay. I think I need to use quote. Okay. Um, So I gonna need to use quote um, for the name and for uh, the character tab value. Um, so again, just like your Python dictionary, you can manually tap it and define it. 
um, or either you can use a second one and it's uh, I already defined the structure for you and you just need to uh, fill in two parts. So what is the field name and what is the value for this field? And that is uh, the idea here. Um, and then MongoDB will automatically uh, define the data type for you for each field. Um, so that is a um, drop down here that you can see. Um, and uh, you can click um, and to choose the different uh, uh, different tabs and it will automatically uh, it just help you to, it's like a template. Um, so give you the template um, and show you uh, what kind of value you should fill. Um, and it will help you to manually input the data. Uh, but usually we don't do that because again, uh, when we use MongoDB, we use it to deal with a large data set. Um, so we don't usually um, manually insert the data into MongoDB. Um, but here is a way you can do. Um, and now I just put it like this. So I click insert, that's it. Um, so my last value uh, will be the one uh, I just inserted. Um, so again, MongoDB uh, doesn't have a restriction on the structure of the collection. Um, so you can have same field for all the documents or you can have different field. It, it doesn't really matter. And it will um, start um, without problem. And you can view your data uh, as a uh, document view and you can change the view um, on the top here, you have three buttons. Um, so the first one is like a list of documents. And the second one uh, looks more like um, a JSON um, file and include the whole, uh, all the brackets. Um, and the third one is a table format. Um, it gives you, um, looks like Excel. Um, it gives you the header and the values. Um, so those are the um, things have here and it will just display uh, 20 documents for you on each page. Um, but we do have 1,339 actually, because I actually, uh, I just manually added one. Okay. Um, so let's go back um, here. Um, so values uh, you can see. Um, Okay. So is there anyone um, have any issue import the data? Um, so let me give you a full a uh, few minutes um, to just check your data and uh, make sure you have your uh, insurance file and the, the restaurant file. The restaurant file is bigger, looks like this. Um, and make sure you have these two files um, and two collections on your MongoDB database.
All right. Um, so I hope you all imported the data successfully. Um, you can just uh, tap in the chat box or you can talk directly if you have any issue, import the data. And now, um, if we are good, uh, can I move to the next step? Um, again, uh, another two things we discussed uh, last week, uh, it's on the update um, and the delete. Um, so we said if you use Canvas, it's pretty easy. Um, and uh, you can see a list of documents, you just you move your mouse to the document that you want to change. Um, and then here is a button um, on the uh, top right corner. The first one is edit document, and you can use that to edit the value. And the last button is delete document. So you can use that to just remove this document. Um, and then the other two uh, buttons in the middle, um, so you can use them to copy the document or to uh, clone the document. Um, if you want like insert an, a new document uh, with a similar structure um, and you don't need to manually tap everything, you can just clone it um, and to make some modification and that's it. Um, so that is a pretty simple uh, thing we can do. Uh, let me go back. We're gonna, firstly, we're gonna use the insurance file. So that's a file we are all pretty familiar with. Um, so we're going to use the insurance file to do that. Okay. All right. So now let's go back um, to the slides. Okay, next thing we're going to do is that we're going to talk about the uh, second operation read. Um, so there is one uh, small difference, um, small change. Um, if you uh, move from RDBMS to uh, MongoDB. So RDBMS only is one query, uh, select query can perform everything uh, that you want to do whenever you want to access the data, you always start from select. Um, and MongoDB is different. MongoDB has two queries. Um, and the first query is called find, and the second query called aggregate. Um, so find helps you to get the slice of data from your collection without aggregation. Um, so if you want to filter, if you want to select a particular field, you can use this find query. Uh, and the second one, aggregate, um, same as the name, um, you can use it to perform aggregation. So there's basically two uh, queries um, we can use to access the data. And that is a difference um, to MongoDB and RDBMS. Um, so in this slides from last week, uh, I showed you this read, um, this read operation using the find query. So we're gonna take a look on the first query first. Um, so find query, um, again, we're using Campus. Uh, Campus provides you a, uh, a simpler way that you don't need to put the whole query here. Uh, so in the slides, I still give you some example with a full uh, a query. So if you would like to use um, the MongoDB uh, command shell um, and to um, perform your access to data. And if you uh, later on, we're gonna learn the uh, API and how to use Python to execute MongoDB uh, query. Um, and in those cases, you may need to use a full query. Um, so that is why in these slides, I still want to show you the structure of the full query, okay? Um, so for the operations, all the operations in MongoDB um, if you want to write a full query and it always starts from DB. Um, so DB, you can think of it as a current database and the DB dot uh, something and you need to uh, tell the system a specific name for your collection. So my collection called Coco. Um, and then in this collection, you need to tell the system what kind of operation you want to do. Um, so here we're talking about the find query. So we're gonna do the find operation. Um, so it looks similar like the Python package. 
Um, so if you want to use some function in a Python package and you need to tell Python uh, the name of the package and dot with the name of the function. So it's the same uh, idea here. So we call db.coco and dot find. Um, and find is going to be the final operation. And it looks like a function. And you can consider it as a function. Um, so it has a parentheses right over here. Um, and if you just want to see everything, um, all the documents, and you don't need to uh, change anything, so you don't need to give any inputs, so it's just a find with a pair of parentheses, and that's it. It's going to return you all the field and all the documents in your collection. Um, and if you want to do some kind of filter or uh, slicing operation, um, so again, um, in MongoDB documents, we have two kind of dimensions. The first dimension is your uh, field name, and the second dimension is your values. Um, so uh, the find operation uh, inside the parentheses, it also takes two parts. Um, and the first part is a filter query, second part is a projection. So the first part, filter query, um, it does similar thing as a where clause in MySQL. Um, so it can take filtering conditions and help you filter the documents based on the values. So that's on the value dimension. And second, the projection, it helps us to uh, filter specific field. Um, so basically it performs on the field dimension and to help us select whether we want display um, or exclude some field from our result. So that is similar to the uh, select part in uh, SQL. Um, so basically it's two parts um, to use. Um, and for the two parts, you can use it as an input inside the find parentheses. Um, and the two parts separate by comma. So same as a uh, input parameter function. And then MongoDB for all the queries, um, and now the um, operations you want to do, and I always use a um, JSON or uh, BSON format. So which means you need to start from a bracket, um, a curly bracket. So like what I'm showing you here and end with a curly bracket. Um, and then you put all your queries between these two brackets. Um, so that is a uh, the structure here um, for the find query. And uh, okay, right over here. Um, and because we have two parts, okay, um, and the different from Python function, we don't have like the name for the parameter. And the MongoDB system can only distinguish the two parameters because they all use uh, both use brackets, so they can only distinguish it based on the position. Um, so MongoDB will treat whatever you put first as a uh, filter query and whatever you put in the second position as a projection query. So if you only have a filter query without a projection, so you can uh, simply put your filter query inside the parentheses without problem because that's the first one. And if you only have a projection query without a filter and you still need to put projection in the second place. So that means you need to have an empty query in the first place. So you still need to put a pair of brackets, um, but we don't have filter, so we don't have anything inside the brackets, uh, and a comma. So that means for the first part, we don't have information, and the second part is projection. So you put your projection query here. So that is two parts. Um, and when you write a full uh, query to make sure um, and to include both parts. Um, if you want to do a projection. And no matter whether you have a filter condition or no, you still need to put the brackets. Um, so that is the uh, two parts. Um, and when uh, should we put the parts? Okay. And then um, since we're talking about MongoDB campus, uh, the MongoDB campus provides you uh, a way to um, easily perform um, these two um, operations, the filter and the projection. Um, in MongoDB, um, let's go back to 
MongoDB Compass right over here. So I'm in my insurance file. Um, and then um, above the list of documents um, right over here, and you will have the um, like the toolbar, okay? Um, and the toolbar starts with a name of your database and the collection and a uh, show you some information, you have the size of your collection and the number of documents um, and how many K you have, um, average size, blah, blah, blah. And then below that you have four tabs. So there's a four buttons you can click. The first one called documents, second one called aggregation, third one called explain, um, and then the last one's indexes. Um, so the first one, the documents, it's the one uh, I'm gonna show you now, uh, which can help us to perform uh, the find operation or query. So basically help us to do the filter and the projection. Uh, so by default, it just locates uh, the, the, uh, the toolbar on documents. And then uh, below the bars here, you can see uh, it provides you one um, like input uh, box and called the filter. So that is a place you can put the filter condition. And there is an expand button called options. So you can click it, it can expand um, the full toolbar for you, the panel. And below the filter is project. And that is a second, uh, second part in the find uh, query. So it's for projection purpose. Um, and we can also uh, do the sort and the uh, limit the number of uh, documents we want to see, um, the same as a limit in, in SQL. Um, and there is one, uh, another one called collection. So that is um, actually change the uh, content uh, display. Um, so we don't really uh, use it very often. Um, so I just escaped this part. Um, and then that will be it. So it looks like a form. And uh, uh, for each um, operation, so it's like an input box and you can type it here. Um, and after we finish this part, we can click this green find button and to find the documents we want based on our future condition projection, um, based on our sort. Um, the operations and the limits, and it's gonna find the uh, final output for you. And then after that, saying I would like to start a new search, and you can click recite. Uh, you can modify um, your condition, or you can click the reset to erase everything, and then start from the beginning. So that is a place we're gonna put our uh, filter condition and the projection. All right, so let's go back here. And then um, in the slides, I provide you some basic thing um, and I provide you the table and showing you the query and the compass query and the SQL query um, and just to compare um, how it looks like. So we're gonna start from projection um, and that is a simple one, okay? Um, and in MongoDB, we have, let me make it larger, okay? So in MongoDB, we have defined a query. Um, so help us to show everything. And in Compass, we don't need to do anything. Um, I already display all the documents we have in the collection. Um, so we don't have anything in Compass. Um, and another thing we uh, can do is we can limit the number of outputs instead of display all of them. Um, and in SQL, we use a limit. Um, and in Compass, we also have the uh, small limit um, input uh, box. And we can just limit the number. We just need to put the numbers, how many documents you want to see from your final um, output. Um, and if you use a query, it's one called find one, um, and they just limit one um, and showing one documents for you. Um, and the last row here in this table showing you the projection. 
Um, yeah, if you use query, we're gonna put it in the second part. Um, and for the projection, um, and it um, just take a field name um, and also a value, true, false, or uh, there are no one. One means true and the zero means false. Um, so basically you just tell the system, um, so that is a field name I want to include or I want to exclude the field. Um, if you have something in projection, if you don't have the projection part and the MongoDB can uh, display all the fields for you, if you add the projection part, the MongoDB can uh, automatically um, exclude all the fields except the ID field. Um, so if you have something in the projection um, and it will uh, display the ID field uh, by default. And then if we don't want it, we need to specify the ID, uh, it goes to zero. So basically uh, the field name underscore ID and the comma, uh, not comma, colon, um, and zero. So it means we want to exclude ID. And for all other regular fields we have uh, in our data set, and we need to tell system that we would like to include it. So we need to put the field name and colon and one for all the fields we want to display in our output. Um, so that is a uh, thing we need to put. And in Compass, we need to do it in the project uh, section. And we need to start with the brackets. Um, so all the inputs we have on campus, um, and we need, we need to pull the whole body, um, starting with a bracket and the content and end with another bracket. Um, so that is the thing we need to do on MongoDB campus. So let me first show you this one in campus, okay? Um, so in campus, it's, it's easier. If we don't have filter, we just don't put anything. And we can uh, start from project. Um, so if you simply do ID zero, Z and um, a mark as red. So mark as red means there is an arrow. And because we forget to put these brackets, so you add the brackets and then um, the red is disappeared and it becomes a regular gray uh, color. So it means everything's fine. Um, and then let's just do this and try to see. So I just want to exclude my ID and I find. Um, so then just to show you everything, exclude the ID. And if you want to add, uh, yeah, my specific field. So you specify the field name and then it can automatically exclude all other fields and just display the field you selected. So right over here for a list of BMIs. And it still includes all the documents, um, but just a limit to the fields that you want to, uh, you want to see here. And then um, I think we have another one called H. Um, so let's just do H right over here. Um, and A will include two fields, um, H and BMI. Uh, let me show you another example. Um, let me see. Okay, let me quickly show you another example um, in this test. Uh, insert. Okay. Um, so let me do this. Um, because the insurance file is like a completed file um, that we don't have any um, missing field. And for all the documents, we have exactly the same um, field and probably it's not very clear. Um, so I manually created this uh, test document, uh, test collection with four documents. 
uh, two fields, um, name and value. Um, and for the first two, those are completed uh, documents with both fields. And for the third one, I only include name field. For the four, uh, fourth one, I only include the value field. And now let's do a projection. Um, and the saying, I don't want ID and I want the name field. Okay. And then I find it. So when you do that, and you will see that we're going to have one empty uh, document because uh, the last document doesn't have the name field. So that shows as empty, and you can only see three values of returned. And if you change it to value, say value one, and you will see the third document is empty. Um, and only again, it's only three documents uh, of returned and the third one's empty. Um, so here in campus, you can see it clearly that we have four documents and then the third one doesn't have value field. Um, so that is information you can see. Uh, but if you use uh, the MongoDB shell and you cannot see it clearly and you can only see that three uh, documents got returned. Um, and the number you see from the uh, output here and the number of documents you have in your output may be different from the number of uh, documents you have in your original uh, collections. So that is a different uh, part um, from um, to MongoDB and uh, MySQL. And again, that is mainly because MongoDB doesn't have a restriction on the structure of the collections. Um, so when you uh, project and trying to select a specific field and you may see a different number of, um, of documents uh, returning your output. Okay. So it's just this part uh, that I want to mention. Um, so let's go back to this insurance. Okay. Um, and then I showed you how to do the project. Um, and uh, right over here in this panel on the bottom right corner, you have two things, escape and the limit, uh, same as uh, SQL. And you can limit the number of documents you want to see, say two. Okay, and then you click the find button. So you're gonna limit um, it to two documents in our output. Um, and they start from the first one and then second one. So we can skip, say I, I just skip the first document and find again. And now uh, it skips the first uh, document um, or top end documents, depends on the number you put in skip. And uh, uh, again, it still limits the number of documents shown in the output. Um, so now it starts from the second document and display the second and the third documents. So that is a skip and a limit you can use um, here in um, MySQL, um, not MySQL, MongoDB campus um, and to limit the output and also to control the field you want to see in the, um, in the um, output using project. So that is a project. Um, can I change it back? Okay, right over here. So that is a project um, operation that we can use, okay? And then, so that is the second part in our query. Um, again, the first part, um, our focus uh, will be the read condition um, that we can add some filter queries into um, apply the conditions on the field. Um, so similar to MySQL, um, we do the condition based on comparison. So we're gonna compare a particular field with a value um, and using um, some operators, uh, comparison operators, like greater than or less than or equal to or not equal to, um, all those things to help us to uh, compare it. And the MongoDB can take a single condition. Uh, it can also take multiple conditions. And for multiple conditions, we use the same logic operator, uh, and or all, and to show the logic um, among those conditions. Um, so that idea is the same, and we just use different uh, um, 
operators here in MongoDB. Um, so first thing, let's start from the uh, very basic condition, uh, the equal condition. Um, so I gave you, yeah, I gave you example um, with the SQL query um, that we would like to select from insurance with a condition age equals to 19. Uh, our second condition here is sex equals to female. Um, so it's two values, the numerical value and the character tab values. And then in uh, MongoDB, uh, we can now work on this filter um, box and we can need to put our condition in the filter box. And again, the same, uh, we start and end with brackets and need to make sure put a pair of brackets first. And then we put our condition inside brackets. Uh, for equal condition, um, and we don't use the equal sign, it's different from, uh, from SQL. And uh, we just indicate the field name and indicate the value. Um, so that indicates a uh, equal condition. So that's it. So instead of equal sign, we use colon. Um, inside the filter condition, we just put the field name, colon, and the actual value. It depends on whether it's numeric or text, uh, text uh, character tab. If it's a character tab, remember to put quote. If it's numbers, you put the number directly. Um, and that will be it. Um, my compass here. Okay. Um, so now, now let me reset button. Okay. So let me reset it um, and do it on filter. So pair of brackets. Uh, we're going to do H goes to. 19, find. And then uh, you can see the displaying document, the number changed from 1,000 something to 68. So that means only 68 um, out of 1,300. Um, we have age equals to 19. Um, and that's one you can do. Uh, you change it to six, you change uh, value. If you put the value directly, again, it's going to show you the red color here means something wrong. So you can put the quote. Um, I think double quote and single quote doesn't really matter. You can put double quote or single quote. Um, both are the same. Um, and then you will see we get around half um, from our data set um, and only with a sex equals to female. So that is a single um, simple condition that you can do. Um, simple equal condition. So you can just do that directly uh, in the filter part. And if we uh, do something, use some uh, field that we don't have in the document, it will not give you arrow. Um, and let's have something called name. We don't have the name um, field in our document. Um, but I put the name in the filter. So you find, and then you will see there's no results. And means that uh, because all of our document, um, they don't have a name field um, just uh, in any of it. So when we're trying to filter our documents using this condition, the system will perform that. It will help you to find it. Um, but after checking all the documents, um, and they cannot find any document that satisfies this condition. So it's going to return you no results. It will not return you arrow. Um, and it just tells you there is no document that satisfy your field, uh, filter condition. And that's it. Um, so again, if you know your data and you make sure, um, and there's a sum, at least the sum for the document, they should have the name field. Um, and uh, it should satisfy the, the thing you want to do, but you see no results. So you, uh, I suggest you go back to check your filter condition to see whether you tapped a wrong field name um, or whether you tapped a wrong uh, comparison um, value. 
Um, and that is another difference uh, to MongoDB and the SQL. In SQL, if you use some, some column names that not existing in the table, it's gonna give you error. So you know you made a, a typo and uh, you made some mistake in the query. But in MongoDB, it will not because um, it doesn't treat it like, a, like a, an error and uh, it treated it like a regular uh, filter condition and uh, uh, it does help you um, to find the documents. Um, so we need to check it uh, by our own and to see the filter names. Um, so let's go back to um, sex here. Okay, good. And then let me change this field name here. Um, so that's this note I put in, in the slides um, that the field name in MongoDB is case sensitive. Um, so in our insurance data set, all the uh, field name, um, they're using um, lower letter. Um, so it's no capital letter. But if I change uh, the sex, um, I change the X to capital. Um, and then you will see there's no results. Um, so that's case sensitive. And you need to make sure the field name you put in the field condition and the field name we have inside the documents and they are exactly the same, um, including the case. So then in our uh, insurance case, for all the fields, I have to use lower letter for all of them. Okay. So then I'm able to see uh, my result. So that is our first Okay, that is our first condition. And now let's see multiple conditions. Um, multiple conditions, um, two um, um, logic operator um, and or all. Um, for the uh, and um, conditions, that's either. Um, and the first row in this table, um, I'm showing you the end condition. Um, so it's two uh, conditions, so one and the second one. Um, so if we're doing that, uh, again, in the parentheses, uh, we do the same thing. And we put the first condition age, it's 19. Um, and we just use a comma uh, to separate them. And the first condition, comma, second condition on region uh, equals to northeast. Uh, so it's a region colon and now east. that's it. So if you have more and the condition, you just keep adding it. So keep adding the comma and the condition, comma, condition, that's it. So that is a, uh, a simple one for and the condition. And the second logic uh, operator is uh, or. Um, and if you want to do an age equals 19 or uh, region equals to northeast, and then we need to use the operator. So different from uh, SQL, uh, SQL uses syntax all, that's it. Um, but here in MongoDB, and we're gonna use a special operator. Um, the name is all, and but it starts uh, with a dollar sign. So basically that's a special rule in MongoDB. Um, for all the uh, kind of operators, um, for the operation you want to do, um, it always start with dollar sign. And because we would like to distinguish between the operators uh, and our uh, the name for the objects we have, like the collection, like say uh, documents, like the field uh, we have on, on MongoDB server. Um, so then for all the operators, um, and we're gonna start from dollar sign, we're then gonna start with dollar sign and you will have a dollar sign and then the name of the operator. Um, so for this all condition, we're gonna use the all operator here. And then for the all condition, again, it links two conditions. Um, so then because we have the operator here, uh, dollar sign all, and we say we want to uh, build a link between two conditions. So we put our two conditions here. Um, and they, um, the thing MongoDB does is that um, 
if you have multiple conditions and link the with all operator, and we're gonna put multiple conditions and the, the MongoDB system treat it, uh, treat them equivalent, uh, or treat them equally. And then how to perform this equal thing. And because those are um, equivalent to each other, those are all conditions, and we're gonna put them together into one array and using this square bracket. And we define an array. Inside an array, we have the elements and each element will be one single condition. And we can put as many as we want. So we put multiple conditions here in the array. And then each two conditions are linked with the operator we defined. So here is the all uh, operator. Um, so you link with this all operator. And then uh, that is how we can put multiple conditions together and the link with a specific um, logical operator. So in, um, again, MongoDB Compass um, right over here. And we can uh, type our conditions. Um, so I will simply add, um, I had the um, sex equals to female, I'm gonna do age equals to 19. And to do the, um, to perform the end condition. And now I only have 33. And that is the end condition. Another way we can do end condition is we can do the same thing um, as the all operator. So we put two conditions. So each condition in a small um, dictionary and these two conditions, they're gonna give us different things, I think. So, and let me see whether this one works. Okay. Um, so it's another thing we can do here, we can put the logic operator, so either and or all, and to link multiple conditions here. So inside an, an array um, using square bracket and you put all the conditions inside the array. I can add more um, and the same, I'm gonna add more on region, uh, not ceased. Okay, um, so now I have three conditions and the, the link is here, the first blue one and, so it means uh, first condition and the second condition and the third condition. Um, so I can also do that. Um, seems like I don't have any results for that. So what if I change the end to all? Okay, so now I have something. So you can modify the operators if I modify it to all, it means that the first condition or the second one or the third one. And that is a thing uh, you can do. So then um, again, the whole condition here um, and the, you uh, define an array, each element in the array will be a full condition. So now my full condition is a uh, simple one. Um, so sex equals that, that is one condition. Uh, another thing you can do is that, let me remove the last one. So I just include two conditions and um, so it's female uh, with age equals to 19. So that is this condition. And now I'm um, saying that we would like to add both um, and and all. And we want to do, um, so sex equals female and the age equals 19 or um, region is um, Northeast. Um, so then our end, first end condition is this one. So second end condition will be a uh, age equals 19 or uh, region is north east. OK. 
okay so it's a two um but these two conditions should link the by an o o operator so we can uh, do uh, the same thing here so we define an o operator and to link these two conditions uh right over here and for the whole um whole condition we use a uh, curly bracket. So that means that, um, so we link um, two set of conditions with end. Um, so the first set of conditions only include one condition. Second set of condition is other all uh, condition. So how can we define other all condition? So we're gonna use this all operator. So other AG equals to 19, um, all re, uh, region equals to Northeast. Um, so that is an other all condition. So we define that. And then because that is a whole like a set of condition, so we add a uh, brackets. So we can use that directly in the filter condition, but now I want to combine it with another condition. So I just copy the whole condition and put it in an array. Uh, and then that's in an array and combined with another condition, a link with end. So we can find that. Um, so now it means I will just type it here. Um, so it means sex equals to female. Um, and so we're going to have a parenthesis, age equals to 19. Mom O region equals to northeast. So that MongoDB condition is equivalent um, to the one I just typed in, in uh, below. Um, so that is a condition in uh, SQL format. Um, so we consider, firstly, we consider two uh, all conditions, other all condition, and then we combine with the first one. Um, so the same um, operation MongoDB is going to do for each document and it's going to check the three conditions and link with your logic value and the return of true or false um, as the final result. And they will display the documents uh, which satisfy the whole combination of the conditions here. So that is the thing um, we can do MongoDB. Um, and just that uh, you can add multiple conditions together. So that is for um, this condition part um, of multiple conditions. Um, so I have the um, example here um, in the next slides, including both and and or all condition. Um, and that is an example. Um, so that will be the uh, logic operator uh, we can do um, to link multiple conditions. And uh, we uh, have one thing left here is on the uh, comparison operator. So we just uh, talked about the equal condition. So what if there is some other kind of conditions we want to do? What if we want to compare uh, the field with a particular value? So we can do that. Um, but MongoDB, um, again, it's different from MySQL. In MongoDB, we don't use those um, operators we use in mathematics. We don't use the signs. And instead of that, we're going to use a MongoDB operator. Again, remember what we, I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so all the MongoDB operators starts with dollar sign. Um, so MongoDB operator here for comparison, it's the same. It starts from dollar sign and then use some letters to, uh, it's actually the initials uh, for the conditions, uh, the terms we use in the condition. Um, so like the first one, the lesson in SQL, we use the signs, but in MongoDB, we use the initial L and T. Um, so it means lesson. Lesson equal, we add the E here, and greater than, greater than equal, and not equal um, condition. And those would be the operator and start with dollar sign. And that uh, will be used in MongoDB to replace the sign uh, we use in SQL. Um, and one example I gave you here is a simple uh, 
condition. Oh. Um, with a comparison on H. So let me reset it. Um, so again, we're going to do H and uh, we compare it with a value 19. Um, instead of the equal condition, I want to do a, uh, another one. I will do the comparison. So basically is H larger than 19. So again, we don't have an equal sign and we use a colon to replace the equal. Um, so it's age like, um, less than 19. And then we do have an arrow here is that because we have two columns and the MongoDB system gonna get confused. So what does it mean uh, by two columns? And then really we cannot have two columns um, without a comma. Um, or without bracket and in one pair of brackets. So what it does is that it can uh, put another pair of brackets and to put our condition um, inside the brackets. Um, so that means that uh, my condition is less than 19. So right over here. So I'm gonna put my condition in brackets um, and then that is a condition, but less than the info, for uh, which, which field do you want to apply it on? And you need to give a field name, which is H. So I want to apply this less than 19 condition on this H field. Um, so basically, again, in one pair of brackets, you can only have one column uh, if you don't put any comma. If we put a comma, it means that um, and we have multiple uh, conditions, so we have multiple fields, but we don't have comma. Um, and we have two columns, so we have to put the brackets um, and to um, close it. Um, so then we define the condition we want to apply on H and uh, less than 19, we search for that. Um, and we can see a few of them. Um, H equals to 18. So that's satisfied with a condition less than 19. And that is the operator we can use, the blue one. Um, so compass is good, they highlight the operator using the blue color. Um, so you can easily see that, which is the operator. And you can modify it to greater or greater equal to, and uh, find again to see uh, the results. So you just need to modify the operator. So those are the operators you need to use if um, we want to do some conditions or comparisons other than equal condition. And you have to um, use, uh, right over here, you have to use the operators um, and start with dollar sign. And MongoDB provides you other operators. Um, here, I just uh, uh, include those we usually use. Um, and to uh, give you an idea. Um, and I put both in the table um, to help you easily map the uh, signs we use in SQL and the operator we use in MongoDB. So those are the read conditions. Um, and I give you some notes. Um, and just to summarize uh, the two things we discussed on the future condition. Um, so each condition will take two parts, the field name and your actual condition. Um, and your actual condition um, also has two parts, the operator and the value. Um, so you need to put the in the brackets. Um, and if we do a equal condition and we can make it simple, it's just an easier way to do that. So we can eliminate the operator part. We can simply put the value for the equal condition. Um, and if we have multiple conditions, we can use the operator um, and to indicate whether the logic uh, relationship is and or or. Um, and again, we have an easier way for and that we can simply put the condition separate by comma, that's it. Um, and just to make sure for each condition, you put the inside the brackets. Um, and uh, if you um, want to perform um, 
we say logic operator, uh, like the all operator, you need to put all the conditions inside a list or an array and separate by comma. Um, and for the whole array is like a regular array and you use a square bracket um, and to uh, include all the conditions we have here. Um, so on this page, I summarize the, uh, the conditions, um, the uh, contents we can put uh, in the filter conditions. Um, so that will be um, regular rate with the filter condition. Um, and I can uh, pause here. Um, so give you an, uh, a break first. Um, so you can try to, uh, so it's, I'm gonna give you like a 12 minute break. Uh, so we're gonna come back at 10. Um, and then um, in the meanwhile, um, if you're trying to understand more and you can uh, try to check the compass query I put in the slides. Um, and you can uh, just uh, replicate what I did and to see whether you can uh, see the result without problem, okay? And then let's do a break. So again, if you have a uh, question, you can simply type it in the chat box.
Okay. Um, so let's come back. Um, so let's come back for uh, some additional information um, on reading the data on MongoDB campus. Okay. Um, so I showed you the two parts, um, how to read the data uh, with filter and with projection. Um, so then um, using the two parts, we should be able to slice our data. Um, so slicing means we can get a specific field and uh, uh, documents, and that's a term we use MongoDB. Um, and we can do that. Oh, wait. I forgot to start my recording. OK. Um, so with a field and projection, we should be able to select the field we want and the documents we want. Um, and then because we can select that, we should be able to see the field name and the uh, values without problem. Um, there is a, a two uh, additional thing I want to mention here um, that um, again, remember that we said uh, when we define a MongoDB uh, document um, and we have the field, uh, it can take two types of values. Uh, it can take uh, numbers and the character type of values. Um, and for these two types, we can simply um, just uh, uh, select or access the data using field name and just perform regular uh, comparison condition, and that's it. Um, but there's special uh, two special tabs, and one called the embedded document, um, another one called the uh, array. And embedded document uh, is what I'm showing you here in the slides, um, and it is uh, it takes a document um, or a dictionary format uh, or based on a dictionary format um, of um, documents as a value um, inside a field. Um, so like the example I'm showing you here, um, you say uh, we have a field in the document called address and the address a field name, and then colon value. And the value here is uh, another document and with some field inside. Um, so with a building information, with a street information. And that is a thing we call the embedded document. Um, and I have the example of, yeah, remember I upload two JSON file on Blackboard, another one called the restaurant. Um, and I have the example in restaurant. Um, if you, right over here. Um, so if you are already import the data into your database. So right over here. Um, and my collection name is just called rest. Um, so that's the restaurant information. And it has this, uh, field called the address and the inside address. And if you see the address um, after the column, it marked as object. Um, so object here means an embedded document and a, uh, a document, it means object. Um, so that is an embedded document. And inside this embedded document, um, it has a small arrow uh, before the name address and you can expand it to see. So inside this embedded document has four information, so four uh, fields, uh, building, um, core, street, zip code. Um, so those are four fields. And for the buildings, that is uh, actually for all the three, the building, street, and zip code, um, those are character tab and with a specific value. For different restaurants, you have different value. Um, so those are the... Um, that is one special tab called embedded document. Uh, another special tab is on the court um, and the grades here. Um, so both court and grade, um, you can see that after the column, it called array. So that is an um, array and the stores an array of data. So you can further expand the court and to see um, this coordinate um, and includes this basically two dimensions um, and the two values to represent the two dimensions and as an array. 
because it's not an embedded document, so we don't have a field name. Um, and because it's an array and which takes multiple, um, multiple values or so elements in the array, and then each element has its own uh, position or index. Um, so just like say array or a list that we define in Python, and we can define an, um, a list with multiple values. And when we want to call a specific value, we use the index. Um, and we say that's on position zero, or position one, or position two, um, or et cetera. And here in the array, when you uh, look into that, MongoDB campus is the same. It tells you the position of the value. So starting from zero, so position zero and one, and then the actual value stored in, that, in, in an array. Um, and here in a call, we store two values. Um, so basically in an array, um, and all the elements you have in an array, they should have the same uh, data type. So that is different from a uh, dictionary. Um, and in this call array, we have two numbers. Um, so actually two um, numbers with decimals. Um, and in the grids, um, here's another um, array, and it shows the, uh, the grading information for this particular restaurant. Um, so there may be um, several reviewers and give a different, uh, different grade. So that is the information we have in this grade array. You can expand this grade and see that. Uh, for the first document uh, in the grades array, we have five elements. Um, and position starting from zero to four. And each element is, uh, is actually an object. Uh, so it's more complicated. Um, so that is an array of documents, um, or array of embedded documents. And each element here stores the grid information. For the grid information, it has a grade, uh, letter grade, and it has a score, and it has a date and time and when the uh, grade has been made. So basically it's three kind of information. And then because it's multiple information, we cannot store it directly. So we have to put it inside an embedded document. And then because we have multiple uh, like grading items. Um, so for all of them, we have to put it in an array. Um, so called is an array of numbers and the grid is an array of embedded documents. So that is why for grid and each element, you can expand it and to see uh, the information here. And we just collapse it, collapse it back. So MongoDB campus, and you can simply see uh, first thing um, before they fill the name, whether there is a small arrow and to expand it if yes, then it means uh, it is as an array or uh, an embedded document. Um, and then you can see after the column, um, so what it says, um, whether it's an object or it's an array. So if it's object, it means the embedded document. Um, so that is a way can help you to um, check which field um, has the embedded document, which field has an array. And then the next thing is that uh, we have data in an embedded document or array and how can we um, apply the projection or how can we apply the filter condition on that? And that is the thing I have in the document, uh, in the slides, um, just as additional information um, and show you how to read the data from the embedded document and uh, how to make use of the information in an array. Um, so I just show you some uh, simple example. Um, and when we read the information from embedded documents is actually uh, simple. Um, so we're gonna do the uh, exactly the same thing um, on both the projection and the, uh, the filter condition. Um, and we only need to modify the field name and not because we have embedded document. Um, so it's actually two levels uh, of information. So like the restaurant information, uh, we have uh, the field called the address and uh, we have some other subfield inside the address called the building probably. So that's the one we care or street um, or zip code. Um, so you can use that and that is uh, 
considered as sub uh, subfield. Um, so when we uh, apply our operations and the when we uh, apply something on a field, um, instead of calling the field directly, we're gonna do field dot subfield. So we're gonna use the whole thing and inside of the field name. So we just put field dot subfield um, on field name. And then after that, we do the same thing. So like the example I'm giving you on a uh, projection. Um, so for the address part, we only want to see the building information uh, instead of others. And that is a projection um, part I would like to make. Um, so then if we go back here to the project, um, to the project on the, the on the restaurant uh, on the restaurant collection, uh, and we can do firstly we want to exclude ID, and uh, secondly we want to do address. Um, so again, Compass it gives you like a list of candidates. So you can simply put address or address dot building something. So let's put it as a one. Um, and uh, I like to include name as well. So two information. Uh, that's it. So let's find it. And then you will see that name is here and address is still an object um, because that's still an embedded document. Um, it just in the embedded document and you, we only want to include one sub build, the building. And that's what uh, uh, I put in the projection part. Um, so then if you expand it, you can only see one, um, the building information. Um, probably we can add another address zip code. So let's add two. Uh, the same thing for the embedded document address part. Now inside the address field, you will have two subfields, the building and the zip code. Um, but again, address itself, it's still an embedded document and the name is still a character tab. So that is a way we can simply uh, indicate a subfield inside an embedded document. So that is the easy part. So just remember to include both the field and the subfield name. So then that is a way how we refer to a subfield inside an embedded document. We can definitely put it in a uh, projection or we can um, simply put it in um, a filter condition uh, like what I showed you here. Um, we just use the same thing, um, field and dot subfield, that's it. Um, and the one more thing that, um, and if you remember when I showed you before in my projection and uh, uh, condition, when I uh, type the field name, um, I didn't use quote. Um, so I just tap the field name directly um, because the system can, uh, um, system is able to um, recognize um, that word as a field name, it's not something else. Um, so I don't need to worry about that, I type it directly. Um, but here, when you use a subfield, when you use a field dot subfield, and because we have the special uh, character dot here, um, and sometimes the system just got confused. Um, so the rule for MongoDB is that if you are trying to use this, um, if you're trying to refer to a subfield and you will need to use a quote um, for the whole uh, field and subfield name. So that is why when you say address dot something and it will automatically add the quote um, on the field name. Um, but anyway, that's a way uh, we can um, refer to or uh, point to a specific subfield in embedded document. Um, and we just use the same thing um, in condition. So we can do the same condition, uh, the comparison equal condition or some non-equal condition um, and just a field dot subfield, that's it. So we can um, use it directly and uh, it gonna help us to filter or do the projection um, directly based on your subfield in the embedded document. Okay, so that will be an uh, easy one on embedded document. Um, so here I have another saying um, query on array. 
Um, so again, um, for array, we have, um, so here I actually have some, um, I have like an example. Um, probably we can, don't know whether we can copy and paste it directly, MongoDB compass. Um, so that is the list of inventory um, list. Um, and that um, it includes an, um, an array um, in tags and with different values. Uh, because the array we have in the restaurant uh, restaurant file is just too complicated. Um, so I want to use a simple example and show you how to perform some operation on, um, on array. Um, so I use as inventory um, five um, documents um, and in the inventory um, collection. So let me see whether I can paste it directly. Uh, let's come back. That one called the inventory. My inventory. Um, so let me see whether I can manually insert the document here. Okay. Uh, I think probably there is some error if we like to copy it directly. Mm. Probably this is gonna work. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, there is some formatting issue. Um. There's some formatting issue when we're trying to insert it. Um, so when we're trying to manually insert that um, for all the field name, uh, we should use quote. I think probably I have one Inventory JSON. Hmm, or some arrow. So let me manually tap something. Journal text. Um, so just let me manually tap, especially the uh, tax information um, here. Just want to insert it. Um, so 
So when you, if you were trying to manually insert it, um, and you can change the tab to array, so you can automatically uh, create the elements with the position for you. So you just need to uh, fill the position um, and fill the uh, specific item um, for each position. So now I have um, two documents. Uh, let me insert the third one. Okay, so I just do the first three with an um, field tax um, as an array. And uh, I have uh, the first document, I have two elements of blank and red. Second document, the same blank red, but just the, I just uh, switch the position. So red and blank. Um, and for the third document here, we have red blank and the additional value uh, plan here. So the three, um, the documents. And then um, that will be the documents uh, I'm gonna use. So let's go back to this query. Um, probably later, let me write down after the class. Let me create a JSON file for you um, with an array. So if you want to replicate what I did in the slides, it may be either. Okay. Um, all right. So then um, we can do something on the elements in the array. Um, and when we read it um, and the field itself, um, it's still, it only has one name um, and we see inventory. And usually we just either display um, it or uh, exclude it from our uh, result. Um, so usually in projection, uh, we just do the same thing and to see whether we would like to include the tag or we would like to exclude tag. And we can do the same thing um, as what we did before. So simply tax is one or zero. Um, and that is one we really do in projection. Um, and our focus here is on condition. Um, so what if we would like to um, apply some condition on the array and how can we do that? So because that is an, uh, is an array and we can treat an array as a whole, um, value or we can treat them separately. Um, so we can different uh, kind of conditions that we can do um, on the elements in an array. So the first one I listed here is just a simply, we can uh, consider the whole array as just a one complete value. Um, and then we can apply condition on that. Um, so we can find, um, do the same thing on the filter condition. And uh, we say we add an uh, equal condition and to check whether tax has a value, um, which is an array with a red and a blank. So that is a thing uh, we can do. And then we do that mm, MongoDB compass. Um, again, filter, um, we do the same thing. We add a pair of uh, brackets and uh, we tell the field name as tax. Um, and then our um, value we want to check is red and uh, blank. So you want to see whether um, the tax field has an array with red and blank um, value in an array. And then we find it. So then, why we don't have Oh, I know why. I have an additional quote here. Okay. So let me remove the quote. I have two quotes and the value. Hmm. 
Okay. So that is my typo. Now it looks okay, I think. So let's try again. Uh, red and blank. Okay. Now we see something. Good. Um, so future condition. Um, we match the whole array. Um, and we says that text should have value uh, red and blank. Um, so it returns you the value red and blank without problem. Um, and then there is only one issue um, that we don't have an issue on the, on the uh, displayed output. Um, but if we check our original uh, collection and we can see that the first document that we have here, it also includes these two um, elements, uh, blank and red. Um, and the only uh, difference is the order. Um, so for the first document, we have the blank in the first element, uh, the uh, position zero, and we have red next. So in the second document, uh, the order is red and the blank. Um, but they both include the same elements. Um, but here is how uh, the MongoDB deal with the case that MongoDB doesn't really help you check all the elements. Um, it just match the whole value you put there, including the element and the order. So that is why uh, when we're trying to filter by um, a, um, this one. So when we're trying to filter, say red and blank, and it gonna check um, the value with the order. So we will only see one, which is a second document um, got displayed in the final output. And uh, it will just uh, discard the first one. So that is uh, the match and the uh, exact match, um, including the matching on the order and elements. Um, but that is the one way you can use uh, to check whether your uh, the array field includes the values. Um, that you want to uh, you want to see. So that is a uh, first um, element we want to uh, first condition. Um, we can do exact match um, and with matching the whole array. And then in this case, when you tap your condition, you need to make sure um, and you include all the elements and you need to make sure the order is correct. Okay. Um, and then if um, you apply your condition and you see nothing returned. Um, it doesn't really mean that you don't um, you don't have the field include all the elements. Probably it just because the order is different. Um, so that is a uh, thing to keep in mind um, if you like to uh, apply the field condition on array. So that is the first uh, condition uh, I provide you here. Um, the second condition here is that uh, we want to lose our uh, the future uh, the condition a little bit, um, to make it not that uh, um, restrictive. Um, so we want to check um, by single element, and we want to see um, at least one element in the array gonna match the listed value. So we would like to uh, give um, a listed value, so a single value and to see whether the array includes that value or not. So then in this case, we can do the same thing as what we mentioned earlier um, on a single field. So we just use a field name and give one value, that's it. Um, so it can help us to check. So instead of an array, we just give one value uh, here. Okay, so I'm gonna use red, find. And it's gonna give us everything basically because all the three documents uh, in my example um, have red value in the tax array. So you're gonna return everything. Um, and then in this case, uh, it doesn't matter how, uh, it doesn't matter the order in your element in the array. Um, and uh, it only checks the value or all the values you have in an array. If it finds at least one match, it's gonna return the document for you. So if you uh, if we change the value from red to blank, 
So now you're gonna see only the last one got returned because the first two documents, they don't uh, include the plan value in the tax array. So that is why uh, we only have, we, we can only see the third one. Um, so that is a, um, like a loser condition uh, we can use um, and just to match um, a little one value in the array with the given information that you have in the condition. So that is um, one to check one um, given value. So what if you want to check uh, multiple given values? Um, so I have two other conditions that provides you um, include multiple given values. Um, probably you can more than one given value. And the, what you can do is that two ways. Um, you can ask MongoDB to check whether the document include all the given values you have here, um, or whether the document includes at least one given value or listed value here and using two operators called all and in. Um, so with the all operator here in the third bullet point um, says that I give two um, given value, red and the plan. Um, so I would like to have the document that match the both uh, two values. So which means the document should include both the red and the plan. So that is what this all operator means. Um, all in the last bullet point here, I uh, replace the all operator uh, using yin. So that means that I would like to see whether there is any value matched any um, given value any from this red and the plan. So if I have a document that only includes plan, uh, then I will accept it. Uh, if the document only includes the red value, I will accept it. If the document include both and the red and plan is even better, I can accept it. So I will only exclude the value, um, which uh, include, uh, exclude the document, which doesn't have um, either red or plan. So these are the two uh, different uh, uh, conditions. And, the, and um, those in and or are operator. Um, so we just do it um, the same thing. Um, we firstly define an array with the two given values, uh, which is red and the plan. And then, um, so let's first do a all operator. So all, I want to check two values. Um, again, the same thing, we have two columns um, in this bracket. Um, so it doesn't work. We should have another bracket um, and to um, for the condition part. So the condition part now uh, has two components, um, the operator all and the value, which is an array. So now I want to match both values, so find. Um, again, one document, which includes both the red value and the plan value. So in this case, the order doesn't really matter. So we can modify our filter condition to plan and red. So we just switch the order, it doesn't matter. Um, it still returns the same thing. Um, Cause now we now do the exact match and we are uh, just trying to find a uh, match by single value. Um, so the order doesn't matter in this case. And then just this one. Uh, what if we modify this operator from n to in? Okay, so in means we're gonna find, uh, if we find document that match that at least one value, we're gonna return it. So we find it. Now you will see that all the three documents got returned because the first two includes the red value. So it's returned. Um, and the last one, definitely we're gonna, we're gonna uh, see it in the output. Um, so that is all and in, um, and that can help you to check the elements you have in an array. Um, and that is the thing uh, you can use directly. Um, in my SQL, we actually have similar things uh, that you can use and and all um, and to um, just check the values. Um, 
in the array and you can define an array um, which we call the candidate value um, and that can help you to, um, to perform the, the check. Um, so that will be the um, operator, um, the filter operator that we can do um, on an values in an array. So again, um, we showed that how to use the subfield in an embedded document um, earlier in the previous section. And then here I showed you how to make use of the values inside an array. So basically because as an array, um, so we usually either uh, do an exact match um, or we search uh, by single value and the, to see whether the values in an array match with our given value. Um, okay, so that would be this part um, on the filter. Um, again, we discuss our main focus is the first two. So filter condition applied on each um, on a uh, specific field uh, in a document and they project which help us to uh, determine which field we would like to exclude uh, or include in our uh, final output. And these two parts uh, can be linked to the uh, two uh, components in the find query uh, in MongoDB and which can help us to uh, slice the data. And we can further um, do a skip and the limit um, to limit the number of uh, documents we want to see. Um, uh, one more thing left here is for the sort. Um, the sort is pretty easy. Um, so similar to project, and we just need to give an, uh, a name of the um, a field. Um, so let me go back to the insurance. So that is either. Um, so we simply gave a name of the field, say we want to sort by age, um, and then two values um, you can give uh, for ascending and descending sort. Um, one is uh, value one. So that means ascending from smallest to largest. Um, and then you just find it gonna, it gonna sort the documents for you by H. And if you want to do a descending, um, you put a negative. So make it a negative value. So negative one, so that means descending from largest to smallest. Um, so that one is a simple in sort. Um, so if you want to sort by more um, fields um, in addition to age, um, because you can see many documents as the same value, same age value. Um, so you can simply add it again to the next one. See, I sort by age and I sort by BMI. Um, so you can do that. So it can uh, perform descending sort on age and then ascending on BMI if the documents they have the same age value. Um, so that is the sort part, um, similar to projection, um, but just the two values are different. One is one, another is negative one. Um, so then that is a uh, last part we have here. In this, we call the documents tab and we can uh, slice our data and the change the uh, display style number of documents and the uh, ordering style in our final output, okay? Um, so then in the slides, uh, I have some other slides on updates. We discussed it, how to do it in, uh, in MongoDB Compass. Uh, and in my slides here, uh, just showing you how to use query to do that. Um, so MongoDB find query is one to access data. And then for other operations, we need to use other uh, queries. Um, like update, they have update query, insert, it has insert query. Um, and update query can help us to update specific value. And it has a uh, operator called set and to update the value for a specific field. Um, and the delayed, it has a delayed query and you can delete all the documents, um, all documents you have in collection you can delete documents based on uh, a filtered condition. So again, both delete and update, it can take filtered condition. 
um, and to only update or delete on selected documents. Um, and the filter condition is gonna look exactly the same as a uh, filter condition we discussed before. Um, so you can put uh, the first components um, using the curly bracket and put the condition there. You can put uh, equal condition, you can put uh, some other comparisons. Um, if you put a non-equal condition, you have to use the operators, MongoDB operator, um, starting with dollar sign. Um, and to form the, um, the filter conditions. And then um, similar, uh, basically similar operation as a SQL um, and we can update or delete the value um, based on the filter condition. So those are the two uh, other um, operations and the queries um, that we have in uh, MongoDB. But again, MongoDB Campus, we can simply use a button to uh, update, delete, and insert data. And we can make use of the documents panel um, and those um, input boxes um, to help us to select the particular uh, documents from a collection. Um, so that is the delete and the sort. Um, MongoDB query also has a sort um, operation um, that we can sort after we find our uh, documents from collection. And uh, the query has a limit um, operation that we can do after we find it. And we can limit the number just by adding um, the limit uh, function um, or the limit operation after that. Um, so those are um, some references to the MongoDB query um, or a full completed query that you can execute directly in MongoDB shell. Okay. Um, and the collection is something we just skipped um, and it allows us to specify the language rules um, that um, I put a link here um, as a link to a MongoDB documentation. Um, if you're interested in uh, those language specific rules, you can check that. So basically it includes uh, like whether you want to see the result for uh, in a um, all um, uppercase or all lowercase um, or whether it's English. If it's not English, it's some other uh, language that's like uh, French or something and probably has some X mark, uh, some special marks. Um, or it's a special uh, characters or letters other than uh, the English letters. Um, so you can specify that um, in MongoDB collection. So that is the uh, last the input box uh, we have in the, uh, in the documents that we didn't mention, okay? Um, okay, so that would be it um, for this, um, this slides. Um, on the four basic operations, uh, create, read, update, and uh, delete, okay? In my slides, again, I showed you both the query and uh, I also showed you how to use it, MongoDB uh, campus. Um, so again, now you should be able to um, just uh, get a slice of data. Um, by selecting or displaying uh, specific fields um, and by applying some filter condition on uh, a field with numeric value, uh, a field with character type value, um, a field with embedded document, um, and also a field with an array as a value. So you should be able to apply uh, those uh, filter condition there to select the, uh, the documents you want. So, mm -hmm. I'll have to do something. Mm. Now let me um, stop sharing first, okay? 
All right. So question, um, do you want me just to stop here for today's lecture? Well, I, I wanted to make a pool, but I don't know how to do that. So anyway, uh, let me show you something right over here. Okay. Um, So let me show you something right over here and then uh, we're gonna uh, stop our uh, lecture. Um, so that is the um, slides I posted for uh, lecture 10. Um, so it's a new slides on page 19. Um, so this slides include some aggregation um, and uh, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna discuss it next week. Um, so on page 19, and I have some exercise. Um, so you don't need to submit it, uh, but it's just for you to uh, do some basic um, exercise. And this exercise includes both aggregation and the regular uh, filter part. Um, so using the insurance file. Um, and uh, uh, you can use the insurance JSON file. Um, I think most of you have already loaded that. Um, and then you can check um, the questions here to see whether you are able to do that. Um, I think you're able to do like the second question. So let's show the selected field um, and uh, um, just to show uh, using some filter condition um, and just to show um, the documents uh, by applying a different uh, uh, different uh, uh, filter condition on like a smoker on region and you can try to play around with it to see whether you're able to put one condition and the multiple conditions, okay? And then uh, that is some exercise uh, about MongoDB, okay? So I can uh, stop the lecture and uh, let me take a look on your questions. Wait a second. Um, okay, so are you free to go if you don't have any question? Um, and uh, if you do have a question, you can um, tap it in the chat box. Okay. Um, if you're okay, so just uh, take a look. MongoDB campus and uh, have a good weekend. I'm uh, gonna see you next week. And for some questions here, let me see. Second homework, okay. So let me, no, third homework. Let me pull up the homework here, okay. Okay, so third homework, um, data collection and the storage. Uh, the first task is ask you to collect the data using the URL. Um, well, okay. Content, data collection, uh, lecture eight. So in lecture eight, I provide you the script, uh, Python script to collect the data. Uh, so I would like you to use Python and to, let me open my spider. So I would like you to use Python to collect the data. And uh, then here in lecture eight, I have the data collection web crawling Python script. 
um i will show you in a second okay let me just open my code web crawling okay all right um okay right over here so that is a script called data collection web crawling and then um let me see so read the data i have one uh this is a showcase called the read data from table so that is a uh the part of code that you can use. So basically in uh, in the homework, I give you the uh, IMDB URL. Uh, in that web page, you can see that includes a table uh, with the top 100 movies and all the information there, right? And then you can take a look on the URL um, and use the beautiful soup and find the tables. So basically uh, on that web page, it's either it only has one table um, and then for each table, again, uh, so I mentioned earlier, so TR means rows and uh, TD means the elements or the columns or the attributes in each row. Um, so what you need to do is uh, in the IMDB website, I think the first row is uh, still first row is a header. So we can extract the data from the second row. Um, so the same as what I did here, uh, the for loop. Um, so I would like to loop um, on each rows, and then I extract all the uh, elements or the uh, columns uh, from a single row. Um, and then on the IMDb website, um, I think it has like columns right over here. So it has one, two, three, four, five. I think you're gonna have five columns. Oh, not top 100, top 250, okay. So five columns. Um, so what I want you to get is uh, rank, title, year, and rating, that's it. Um, so rank, title, year. So all the three kind of information you can get from this, the second column called the rank and the title, right? And then that's gonna be a long string, including the dot and includes the parentheses. So what you need to do is that you need to uh, get a split, uh, just do some clean and the split the long string to three parts. So you just need to get the extract the number only for the rank and the title only for the title column and the year, the four digit year only for the uh, year column in the output. And that's the first three uh, things I would like you to do in the output. And the last thing is the reading, the reading from another called IMDB reading column. So the third column on the uh, table on the website. And then uh, you just pick the third column, extract a number and that's it. So in the code that I shared with you, um, so for each row, you read the row and you find all the columns. Again, you need to check the websites that we, uh, we need, which actually we just need the second and the third column. So you find all the columns and you just need to get the second one um, and the third one. So for the second column, you get a text. I have it right over here. You can get the content. Uh, and the only thing, like I mentioned earlier, uh, that is a long string and you need to uh, do some cleaning on the string and display them um, and to get the three information, uh, you can store it in three variables. And then again, we have the third column. So you get the text from the third column to get the, uh, the reading. So basically, uh, at the end of each loop, you will have four variables to store the rank, uh, movie title, uh, year, 
and uh, the uh, the stars of the reading. So you will have four elements, and you can print it out and to see whether the, the elements is correct or no. And then it should match with what you see on the web page. So after that, um, so that's a part of your loop. Now you can print out uh, 250 movies without problem. And then you can save the data into a, uh, a pandas data frame. Okay, so you simply append each row uh, into a pandas data frame and make sure at the end, your pandas data frame includes four uh, columns and uh, 250 rows. And then uh, test to just use this uh, PyMySQL package and to um, execute all the SQL query using Python. And that's something we discussed the week before, uh, lecture seven. So here, lecture seven, uh, the first file, um, well, fortunately, that's it's a um, Jupyter notebook file. Um, then we have the example there. Um, so you see a uh, PyMySQL package, build the connection with your local MySQL database. Um, and then since you already have the, uh, the pandas data frame from the previous um, task, and now you need to do is you need to execute the query to create a table with uh, four columns. And they just need to uh, make sure the variable, uh, the column uh, data tab you have matches with your, your data. And then uh, you need to insert your data. Uh, I actually have an easier way here in this script um, to convert directly, to convert the data frame, uh, pandas data frame from Python to a MySQL table. You can use that directly. Uh, then you just need one line of code. To do that. So that is a second part here, basically. So again, for the task one, um, yes, you need to use Python. Um, and from my, my lecture eight uh, script, um, and you should be able to download the extracting information from a table um, in this IMDB website. Okay. Um, so that's about Homework three. Oh, that's due tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay, so if you cannot finish this weekend, you can submit it later, um, probably later next week. Um, so just make sure you uh, submit it um, when you finish it, okay? Um, and did there any other question? Yeah, you can get the extension. Uh, you just uh, submit it um, sometime next week by next weekend. Hopefully you can finish that, okay? Because we're gonna have another homework and uh, I'm thinking, uh, let me think. Oh, uh, next week is Good Friday. Um, and then there are three more lectures. Mm. Do you want a break next week? So I can, uh, because for MongoDB, we have the aggregation left, right? So I can actually, um, I can make a recording on the aggregation part and then I can upload it on YouTube so you can watch the aggregation part. Um, and then uh, we are done with the MongoDB like uh, data access and you're gonna have a homework on MongoDB, right? Um, and then um, that one probably gonna be a, a, a like a shorter video, um, no, no, 10 minutes, 20 minutes video, something like that. Um, and then uh, you can take a look on the homework, right? And uh, uh, we're gonna have a new homework on uh, MongoDB and we can have another one on AWS, okay? So next week, 
I'm gonna post an announcement. Next week we will not have a live class. Um, and for the MongoDB aggregation part, I'm gonna post a video. So I will not discuss that on, um, in class, okay? And um, um, another one, probably I will also post a video. Um, so that is a uh, Python API with MongoDB. Um, so that one I will consider it as optional. Um, so you can take a look on that um, by your own. And then after next week, we will have three more lectures. Um, so we have another lecture, talk a little bit on uh, MongoDB and the distributed system. And we will introduce the idea on uh, AWS and uh, Hadoop as well. So two more homeworks that I'm gonna post it later. Um, so that's the two things left, AWS certificate and the uh, MongoDB homework. So for MongoDB homework, I just like you to use campus access data. So using what we discussed today and aggregation. So that is exercise for MongoDB, okay? Good, okay. So I'll post the an announcement and make sure you all know that. And after I finish the small recording, I will also post a link there, okay? And then next week we will not have a live class. Um, so again, uh, I probably I gonna have a uh, like an online Q and A session um, with a uh, another the uh, intro to data science class um, I have this semester. Um, so if you want to join and if you have some uh, questions about the homework or MongoDB or whatever, so just let me know, um, and we uh, can hold a Zoom meeting together so I can answer your question. Okay. Um, AWS certificate, um, well, that one is um, like an online video thing. So it helps you to get an idea on AWS and the cloud service hosted by Amazon. Um, so what is it um, and how people use that um, and what is a core service? So there's no like exam. Uh, it's just a small like two and three questions. Uh, it called knowledge check. Uh, so there's no grading. Um, I just want you to take a look on the videos. Um, and then after that, um, it will give you not really a certificate, it's like a uh, accomplishment, something like that, or the proof of uh, completion. I think that's what uh, uh, they call it. Um, so I just want to make sure you watch the video, that's it. Okay. All right. So again, two more homeworks and your final project. Um, so just remember if you haven't started that, um, remember that you have a final project, okay? Um, I haven't received any question about final project. I don't know whether you have any. Um, so we take a look on the requirement and let me know if you have any question, okay? So if it's good, I think, so we'll finish our class today. Um, just keep me posted if you have any um, issue or uh, any question on um, anything, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna see you in two weeks, I guess. All right, um, enjoy your week, enjoy the spring and enjoy your work at home experience. <laughs>